Hey everyone, today we're going to be back for a quickie. So in this video, we're going to learn how to write anchor tests for PDAs. As always, my name is Josh, and this channel's mission is to accelerate the real transition of blockchain technology. So the objective of this video, we're going to write tests for a smart contract that we've been talking about for the past two videos. Uh, previously, I said that we couldn't. Turns out, we actually could, and it was just a user mistake. How did I know? Well, Here's what I said previously, and this was the error that I got when I tried to write a test. So I did, it wasn't that I didn't try, I just failed. So what changed? Well, turns out it was just a user mistake. I decided to ask a Stack Overflow question or Stack Exchange. So if you open up this on Solana Stack Exchange, I asked my question, hey, you know, I made this PDA, I wrote a test for it, I got this error, I don't know why, and I, you know, I made a front end and it worked just fine. So I gave him my code, I wrote the test, and it turns out what the problem was? Well, thank you, um, All Blooming and uh, Steve Fedoran. Sorry for butchering your name. And it turns out my problem was that, uh, well, we'll find out what my problem is later, but uh, the quick thing is when I was getting my PDA address, it turned out that uh, I accidentally included the wrong seed. Whoops. So we're going to look into that today. So. As always, this video is sponsored by my previous playlist. We talked about this content like three times already. You get, you know, with inflation, we gotta stretch these videos for as long as they can. And as always, or not as always, this time this is development advice. Do test your code yeah, so you can avoid rug pulling people by accident. And you know, we'll go over the same content again. What are PDAs? Very quickly, uh, PDA stands for Program Derived Addresses. Uh, they are essentially accounts owned and modified by the smart contract and not you and myself. And there's no private key associated with them as opposed to our wallet keys, which has a public private key. And this is how we represent this. There's a curved line. Anything on the curved line is a public private pair key, AKA our wallets. And anything that's not on the line, it is a, a PDA. Uh, read the slide, go past the, go look at the previous videos. I'll we'll talk about it more in depth. Okay. So what did we do in the past video or where we made the smart contract? We made an escrow example. Um, we want to make a contract that would act as a third party to hold our funds for a individual. And so, so quickly diving into the details, we have a seed that we use to represent the relationship. And that seed, it consists of three things. The big string that we want to use for our PDA, which is an escrow, the sender's public key, and the receiver's public key. Essentially, you can think of this as a hash map or a table that takes in multiple variables. You put in the three inputs and then you get a value back, and that value will represent our account. And so, just quickly going back and looking at our PDA example again, we are creating a context. This is for the instruction that we when we send our transaction to our smart contract. Um, there is four fields that we send in. We have our escrow, which is our PDA information. We have the from account. We have the to account. And then we just have system program. So we dive into our escrow account that we use for our PDA. They're just three fields and essentially just the data that we pass in plus a amount variable that we also will pass in. We'll see more on this again later. And that's basically our smart contract. So now to the crux of the actual video. How do we actually test it? Um, well, we're not creating a DAF, so ignore this. We're creating a test using the Anchor library. Whenever you do an Anchor init and create an Anchor project, there is a test file. So we're going to build off of that. The test is located at uh, slash test slash demo dash pda.ds. I will include a link to my GitHub repo on the description below. So very important stuff and potentially maybe, maybe this is just me saving face here. Why my initial code failed was not because of the seed, but maybe it was because I failed to generate the address. I don't know, but I think you'll have to do this regardless when you deploy anyways. And we did this in the previous video when we actually created a front end, but we'll do it again just for the sake of completeness. Plus there was actually one step I failed. So by default, whenever you generate a anchor project, there's actually a address where, you know, where the smart contract is located and it's a default address. So we can't all use that same address. So what we have to do is when we first deploy our app, it would actually give us a new address that we can append back into our code. And so with that address, we need to put it in three places or two places back in our code and in this anchor.tomo file. So 
So let's just do a quick run through. So I've already opened up my project. You can clone the repo on your when your WSL instance. Uh, I think we went through this quite enough that I don't have to do this every single time. I'm going to use control uh, squiggly to open up the terminal. And so this is on my uh, root directory of the projects. So as always, the first thing we need to do is we need to start our local node because we're deploying to our locally. So Solana test validator, I spelled it wrong. Okay, so this will start our Solana blockchain locally so we can deploy our smart contract. Okay, great. So it started. So now we click the plus button to open up another tab and we can deploy our code. So normally you can just do anchor deploy, but mostly, most of the time, probably first do anchor build and then you do anchor deploy. I should probably also make this text bigger for all of us. Apologies ahead of time, but I think we did enough. All right. So here's the program ID that gets generated. And the two places that we need to update it, which I already did in this in past videos, but just to go over this again, if you go inside uh, app, or not app, uh, programs, there you go, programs, source, and librs, just go to the very top, there's a declare ID. This is where you include your first address. Then you just do anchor deploy again one more time. And the other location where I missed is if you go into the anchor tomo file inside your root directory, there's this uh, pro, there's under your programs that local net, there's a uh, location where you can put your address in. I already did it, as you can see, so saved it. And that's it. That's all you need to do to add your address. So let's go back to slide. Okay, great. So we have this. But before we get to that, let's just go over what is involved. And let me move my head. So to write a test, uh, we need to first know how do we actually retrieve a PDA, the, you know, the address, and how do we actually get the account information that is associated with our PDA. So, so to get the PDA, we take advantage of Solana's um, library. Uh, specifically, we call web3.publickey.findprogramaddress. And this would return to us a address based off of the seed, which is the first parameter that we give, and the smart contract that we're querying. And so in this example, where the three things as you call for our seed is we have a string of escrow. Uh, everything has to be in a buffer format, by the way, or a byte format. So the first thing is a string. The second thing is a the our from public key who is sending the value. So uh, we'll see where we get the anchor wallet from later. But we get that, we get the public key, and then we just call to buffer to convert it into a byte array. And then finally, we're also uh, using our two key, the person we're sending the funds to as another seed. So we just have our two key. And then of course, we give it the program ID of the smart contract that we are deploying. And this is a network call. So that's why we need call wait. So we can wait for the response to come back to us. And then once we get the response, there are two fields actually in the object that we get back. Uh, I can't remember the second one. I think it was like an integer. But the first thing is a address of the PDA that we got. So that's how we get the PDA. It, it doesn't have to exist on the network yet, but if it did exist, it would be this address guaranteed based off of how PDAs work. Now, if we want to actually get the account that's associated with it, we just use program and uh, this program refers to the helper library that Anchor provides that allows us to interact with the smart contract that we wrote. So program dot account and escrow account and escrow account being the, the actual name of the custom data. And that's all you need to do to send a transaction to get the data. So remember this or don't because you can always reference this. That's how we get that. But how do we actually send the transaction? Well, luckily for us, anchor once again takes care of all of this for us. We just use program dot methods methods being the instructions that we've created in our smart contract. And we just call the method that we implemented, which is create escrow. So we just take a quick peek back here. That is this create escrow context that we implemented in a couple of videos back. All right. So as a quick reminder, again, the first parameter that we pass in is a string. BN says we're big number, I believe. So it just converts our number into a byte format. And you see to see what it represents, if we look back in our create escrow uh, instruction, we take in the context, and this is by default what we need to do in every video. But we also take in a variable, and that is what this represents, uh, just the amount that we want to transfer to someone else. And then, of course, 
for the accounts, that information that we need to, need to include, that's all from the smart contract, like so. Another thing here is that escrow is the escrow PDA that we created from this part of the code, the getting address code. And that should be all we need to do. So let's go jump into the code and see what happens. All right, so back in the code, let's open up our test file, which is in tests and demo PDA. So I'm not going to waste our time typing this up with all the codes available on GitHub. So just reference in there. So we're just going to look into the code of what's written. So look at the code. Here's all these imports that we have. Here's our testing framework. The scribe you can think of is just the suite of tests that we have. And it, every it is an individual unit test that gets ran. Looking at, let's just close this so we have more space. Maybe make it bigger. All right, let's call this. So just kind of going through the code. First, uh, we have some setup code. And this is actually something that the uh, anchor provides for us when we init our first project. First thing is we need to set our provider. And this is essentially it's just all of the basic uh, scaffolding that we have to do to make a connection to the smart contract. Um, so that's like things like generating a wallet, setting up our connection. And Anchor, using this Anchor provider environment, automatically sets it up for us and we don't need to do anything. Now, uh, if you saw my previous video where we actually created the front end, you know that it's not that straightforward. We actually have to manually set it. But just for the sake of testing, it's pretty straightforward. And so next, we need to get our program. Um, just also like in the previous video, you have to do more setup, but, but Anchor makes it a lot easier for setup. We just call anchor.workspace dot the name of our smart contract. And this would create a program instance for us to reference our smart contract code. And just so that we get type safety, we cast it to be a type program of the demo PDA, the type that it's Anchor generates for us so that we can actually know what methods that we're calling and the compiler won't complain. Okay, great. So let's look into the code itself. So as we alluded to earlier, we need a from key and a to key. So for the from key, we're just going to use the public key that Anchor creates for us. And we can access that by just calling anchor.anchorprovider.local. Uh, the wallet and then the public key. And next up is the to wallet. This is the, the wallet that we want to send the funds to one day. And uh, it's a key pair. And we, in, for this video, uh, for the sake of test, we're just going to generate a new one. So now that we have all our prerequisites, it's just, the, the next thing we need to do is we need to get the PDA for our transaction. And we've talked about in this, the slide, so I'm not going to dig into this anymore. Just get the first field that we care about, the PDA. So for the test, I just printed it out because, you know, we could see what it is, but we don't need to do that. So the next part is now that we have the PDA, we can actually send the transaction to our smart contract to, you know, test it. And so for our method, we're just going to hard code the value 32. And then of course, for our accounts, we just give it an array, a object literal of the value that we need for our um, context, which we all defined right here. And so I won't dig into it. We already saw what it is. We have our from key, our to key, the program ID, and our escrow, uh, our, our PDA. And then we just finally call RPC to send the transaction to our smart contract. All right. So now that that is all completed, we can actually fetch the account that's associated with our PDA that we received earlier. If we called this earlier before we called this transaction, we would crash because the PDA actually doesn't have any data. So after we finish calling the fetch, we have our escrow account. I once again just printed it so we can see what it is. And then now as any good unit test, now we have set up our data. It's time to just make sure, assert and make sure that what we got is what we expected. So what are the three things that we did? The first thing is we checked to see if the amount that we stored on the account is 32. We checked to see if the from public key on our escrow account is equivalent to the public key that we sent it. And then finally, if the two public key is equivalent to the two public key that we sent in. Not rocket science, I think pretty straightforward. Uh, one thing I will say is that I set the assert to be that is true because for some reason, uh, I don't know why, but these two public keys are not the same. Didn't dig into it too much.
But instead, what I found is if you just call the equals function of the public key, they do the checks for you, and somehow that works out to be more equal, I guess. Anyways, so that is the most basic test that we can write where we just initialize our uh, PDA account. So to test that, uh, we do anchor deploy. So our anchor test. This will actually fail because we have this running. Uh, and so the same port will be used. So first we need to stop this by hitting Control C. And I can just do anchor, anchor space test. Okay, run this and we will see our test. So as you see, our test passes. It'd take for about half a second, so maybe that's not ideal, but you know, it's fine. All right, so let's look at, so before we finish, let's actually look at the data. So the first thing we printed out is the public key, of the PDA. Um, you can see that in byte format, not really that impressive or important to care. The second data that we sent, this is the PDA account information. Then you see it has three fields that we set, the from, the to, and the amount. As you see, the amount is not 32, but this is a byte representation. You can just tell by looking our the fact that our test passed shows that this 20 actually is 32. Uh, I think this is probably in base 16, I believe. So it might actually be equivalent to 32, but I'm not going to think about it too much. So yeah, that is it for writing tests. Apologies earlier for past videos where there was confusion about saying that it didn't work. I was wrong. It definitely does work, and I've proven it to all of you now. So that is it for this video. If you found it helpful, please do me a favor and like and subscribe if you have not and maybe hit the bell notification. Otherwise, stay tuned. I'm working on creating a, a template to easily create a front end to talk to their smart contract and all the pieces that are involved in it. And then stay tuned finally for our, our big project that we're going to create where we're probably going to imitate some real world system like um, Reddit or Facebook or something like that. And we're going to create both the smart contract side to it and the back and the front end that'll talk to it. But until then, I'll catch you all later. See ya.